In terms of technology, both the RAH-66 Comanche and the B-2 Spirit are exemplary examples of advanced black technology equipment in the U.S. military. The RAH-66 Comanche revealed to the world that helicopters could not only be stealthy in front of radar, but also have silent rotor blades. At the time, these two features alone rendered the most recent, and even the still in development, new generation of armed helicopters from various countries obsolete. While the RAH-66 Comanche made an impressive first impression, this black technology armed helicopter, which took 20 years to create and cost $7 billion, never saw widespread production or service. Before the program was canceled, just two units were constructed. Because the Comanche production plan was canceled, the unit cost of these two helicopters would considerably exceed the $1 billion price tag of the B-2 Spirit, making them the most costly aircraft ever produced. However, there had to be valid reasons for the U.S. Army to discontinue production of this type of helicopter, especially given the new tactics used in the Russo-Ukrainian struggle. This highlights the validity of discontinuing the Comanche's development. Today, We'll look at the Comanche, a helicopter that has disappointed many military aficionados. The Soviet Union had long been the United States' most likely adversary. When the Cold War between the two countries reached its apex in the early 1980s, the U.S. military's natural development trajectory and primary defensive strategy was to produce more powerful weapons to strategically suppress the opponent. How far did the U.S. military go with this? Weapons have to be kept on the cutting edge at all times, with no room for error. The U.S. Army at the time considered that the AH-1 Cobra and OH-58 Kiowa had fallen behind and needed to be replaced under this development route. The Cobra was an attack helicopter, and the Kiowa was a reconnaissance helicopter. The tactical coordination involved using the Kiowa to scout the location of enemy tanks, followed by the Cobra delivering firepower to destroy them. At that time, the U.S. Army already had a replacement for the Cobra, which was the well-known AH-64 Apache. But who would replace the Kiowa? The U.S. Army faced a difficult decision. Why do we say that? Let's delve into the background at that time. The U.S. military demanded that its weapons always be advanced. When there was no optimal choice, the current equipment could be accommodated. But with a better option available, according to the requirements of the U.S. military, it would be impossible to continue using the Kiowa. So, what was the best choice at that time? It was the U.S. Air Force's stealth fighter, the F-117. Based on the idea of maintaining the U.S. military's latest and optimal standards, the F-117 naturally stood out as the leading example at that time. It was the world's first production and operational stealth fighter, with technology that was far ahead. The U.S. Army saw this and thought, well, this is good, we want it too, so they approached Boeing. However, after hearing the Army's requirements, Boeing's designers refused the request. In theory, if the Air Force could have the technology, the Army could naturally have it as well. So why did Boeing refuse? At that time, designing the aircraft with multi-angular reflective surfaces and coating the exterior with radar-absorbing materials would make the aircraft invisible to radar. The F-117 was a very successful example of this. But making a helicopter stealthy was an idea that had never crossed the minds of all the military manufacturers in the world, including those in the United States. As for why, we'll discuss that later. Continuing with the Army's requirements, just as Boeing rejected the request, the U.S. Army made a bold move. They handed a check worth $2.8 billion to the president of Boeing. Keep in mind that this was in the 1980s. Tempted by the offer, Boeing pondered for a long time and decided to partner with another company, Sikorsky, to jointly develop the helicopter. In the end, both companies delivered an answer that satisfied the U.S. Army, and that was the beginning of the story of the Comanche. Let's continue discussing the design of the RAH-66 Comanche. With the platform and experience gained from the F-117, both Boeing and Sikorsky chose to take a shortcut in the development process. To keep it concise, we will focus on Boeing's contributions to the Comanche's design. 
First, Boeing designed the fuselage with variable angle radar reflections. The fuselage surface was made of composite materials that absorb radar waves, further reducing the radar cross-section of the aircraft. The Comanche's radar cross-section was only 1 250th of the OH-58 Kiowa, making its body stealthy. In addition, the Comanche had a different exhaust system compared to other helicopters. Its exhaust was directed through the shielded tail, effectively hiding its infrared signature and making it difficult to lock onto by heat-seeking missiles. Originally planned as a reconnaissance-armed helicopter, the U.S. Army saw the potential for stealth capabilities and wanted to enhance its firepower. The Army proposed this improvement, but the development team threw cold water on the idea, asking how the rotor blades could be made stealthy. Anyone who has witnessed helicopters taking off and landing would understand that rotor blades are significant noise generators. The lift of a helicopter comes from the kinetic energy generated by the high-speed rotation of the rotor blades, and the tips of the blades can produce sonic booms when breaking the sound barrier. How could this noise issue be addressed? Should they go to the enemy's position and cover their ears? The problem was presented to the U.S. Army, and unsurprisingly, they pulled out their trump card once again, a checkbook. Money isn't everything, but when it's $7 billion, it can solve almost any problem. The researchers from both companies quickly came up with a mature solution. They replaced the traditional rotor blades with a downward slanted, specially shaped design. This minor yet unique modification reduced the noise produced during Comanche's flight by half compared to traditional armed helicopters. The audible range for ground observers was shortened to one-third of that for a regular helicopter. In other words, while you could hear the sound of a regular helicopter from 5 kilometers away, when you heard the Comanche, it would be less than 2 kilometers away from you. Compared to the stealth coatings that provide stealth capabilities, the rotor blade design is undeniably a remarkable piece of black technology. To fulfill its reconnaissance and defensive roles, the Comanche was equipped with a complete set of radar warning systems, electronic warfare systems, advanced cockpit systems, and countermeasures such as chaff and flare decoy systems. It also featured Kevlar composite graphite bullet-resistant armor. These systems, which may not be considered high-tech by today's standards, especially for U.S. military equipment, will not be discussed in detail here. In summary, the stealth capability is the most distinctive feature of the Comanche. Some say it is the first stealth helicopter and the only one in the helicopter family. It has even been referred to as the F-117 of helicopters. Indeed, the Comanche boasts several outstanding stealth designs. It combines the stealth technology of the B-2 bomber and F-117 aircraft. The overall radar cross-section of the Comanche's fuselage is much smaller compared to other current helicopters. Taking the AH-64 Apache as an example, the Comanche has only 1% of its radar cross-section. Besides achieving stealth, the Comanche also utilizes the highest amount of composite material in a helicopter worldwide. The composite materials used in the Comanche account for 51% of its total structural weight, while the UH-60 Black Hawk only uses 9% composite materials. The combination of stealth and advanced materials led many to believe that the Comanche had exceptional survivability. This was a capital point that Boeing often emphasized. There is a widely circulated saying that when the Comanche flies in the sky, the enemy can't see it. Even if they see it, they can't hit it. And even if they hit it, it won't be shot down. Shot down, its pilot would still survive. While the previous statement may sound exaggerated, it is sufficient to prove that the designers put a lot of effort into the survivability of the Comanche. Moving on to the third highlight of the Comanche, it was the world's first fully digital and intelligent helicopter. The most outstanding feature was that the Comanche conducted reconnaissance missions with the assistance of computers. The entire process, from target detection on the battlefield to commanding the attack forces, could be completed in around 10 minutes, whereas a conventional reconnaissance aircraft would require one to two hours. Even more astonishing was the Comanche's fault display system, which could predict impending malfunctions and display the preventive measures to be taken. This technology was undoubtedly beyond the technological understanding of the time, which is why many people referred to the Comanche as a product of black technology. 
The enemy's radar couldn't detect it, and missiles couldn't lock onto it. Meanwhile, the Comanche could unleash its firepower against enemy positions. Opening the ammunition bays on both sides of the Comanche revealed its true form, with six Hellfire missiles mounted and a 20mm XM3013 barreled Gatling gun. This was the firepower configuration carried by the Comanche in its fully stealthy state. If the battlefield situation didn't require stealth, it could openly mount ammunition. At such times, the Comanche could mount additional racks and carry eight Hellfire missiles or 16 Stinger missiles, along with other ammunition that Cobra and Apache attack helicopters could carry. The Comanche's firepower output fully met the needs of the U.S. Army. The Comanche was ultimately born in 2002, after a 21-year gestation period that began in 1982. However, the U.S. Army's pre-order number quickly decreased from the initial 5,000 units in the bidding process to 1,200 units as flying data continued to advance. The Comanche's production abruptly came to an end shortly after that. Why did that take place? Did the Comanche objectively have any flaws? Naturally, it did, but fortunately, these defects were not deadly. In other words, any issue could be resolved as long as absolutely cutting-edge weaponry was available due to the U.S. military's huge budget at the time. Let's first take a look at its flaws. The Comanche's multifaceted angular body design, which provided its stealth advantages, was particularly unfriendly to the stability of flight. The F-117 overcame the instability caused by its body with an advanced flight computer system. During the initial test flights of the Comanche, engineers also considered equipping it with the flight computer from the F-117 to overcome this problem, but it was quickly abandoned. The reason is that the air conditions faced by helicopters and fighter jets are completely different. Fixed-wing aircraft only need to deal with the forces of forward and upward motion to achieve stable flight. However, helicopters have too many forces to balance, including pitch, yaw, and roll, which are the most basic ones. Ground effect, vortex ring state, and other factors make it even more challenging. Therefore, the flight computer of the F-117 was incapable of handling such complex conditions, and as a result, the stability of the Comanche was not improved. Additionally, those familiar with the B-2 bomber should know that maintaining the radar absorbing coatings is an expensive endeavor. After each flight, the coatings need to be reapplied. The B-2 is a strategic bomber with a relatively low deployment frequency, but the Comanche is different. It is a reconnaissance helicopter that hovers almost continuously. Military experts have conducted calculations, and if the Comanche were in service, the maintenance cost of its radar absorbing coatings would be on par with the B-2. The maintenance costs are exceedingly costly, which is also the Comanche's fatal fault. But let's go back to business. Money solvable problems aren't truly difficulties, especially when it comes to something like the Comanche. It was capable of conducting reconnaissance, carrying out attacks, performing practically all flying duties, and quickly disappearing from sight. Looking back at the Cold War era and the standards the U.S. had for its military arsenal, it becomes clear that the U.S. military wasn't afraid to spend money as long as they could achieve first place and maintain a sufficient level of advancement in a particular field. Therefore, whether it was flight stability or coding maintenance, these were issues that money could solve and were not the true reasons for the demise of the Comanche. Some people say that the Comanche's production was halted because of the self-dissolution of the Soviet Union, which led the U.S. military to lose its primary target. However, this claim is not accurate because, in the past 30 years, the U.S. military has not stalled in terms of military development due to the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Even today, Russia remains a hypothetical enemy. The real reason for the discontinuation of the Comanche is actually quite simple. A superior alternative emerged in the same field. Around the year 2000, when the Comanche, primarily designed for reconnaissance, had not yet been born, its functionality had already been completely replaced. The U.S. Air Force began deploying a large number of reconnaissance drones on the battlefield. Unmanned aerial vehicles have significant advantages over the Comanche in terms of reconnaissance. They can hover over the battlefield for extended periods, with endurance easily surpassing 20 hours. 
In terms of attack capabilities, the U.S. Army had the more powerful Apache helicopter. Therefore, the Comanche at that time became unappealing to the U.S. Army. If they were to abandon the project, $7 billion would go down the drain. However, if they continued production, they would not only have to solve the helicopter's flight stability but also face enormous coding maintenance costs. Therefore, in 2004, the U.S. Army announced the official discontinuation of the Comanche. Subsequently, well-known drones like the Predator and Global Hawk became the new darlings of the U.S. Army. This is the complete story of the Comanche.